Ain't it grand to be in the house of the Lord? Yes, it is. And the flood didn't wash you away. Amen. I was kidding with Nanny. I said, Oh, ye of little faith, if you had a little more faith, you could have walked on that water on the way in. <laughs> Gotta got live right. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Yes, it is. Thank you, Father. All right. Tonight we're in chapter 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. And we got a good study tonight. Uh, Paul, he goes back and starts talking about his letter to the Corinthians, his first letter, and how it affected them, and what he, what he wanted it to do, and what it did in their lives and in the church. Because after that first letter that he wrote, there came some serious changes in the church at Corinth. And that's what he was wanting to see because they had a lot of questions, didn't they? They had a lot of things that was going on in the church that wasn't biblical. It wasn't godly or the way it was supposed to be. Amen? Amen. And uh, this is good for tonight because we need uplifting. And it's just a good chapter, which all of them are. Amen? So chapter 7, verse 1, we're going to jump right in. Having therefore these promises... Dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Now, this is a strong scripture, and he starts out in a good way. Amen. You know, he says, having therefore these promises. What promises is he talking about? And if you go back in uh, chapter six and he was telling them, you know, you got to be a separate people. He told them, if you did that, that you will be my people and I'll be your God. He's told them to come out from among them and I will receive you. Touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. These are all promises of God. Amen. Amen. He said he'd be a father unto you and you would be his sons and his daughters. And that's what he opens it up. He says, having therefore these promises. So tonight I want you to know that if you've been born again and washed in the blood, you're the son of God. Amen. I'm his son tonight. Amen. Amen. I am his son and you're his daughter. Praise yes, God. We're God. joint heirs with Jesus. Everything that pertains to the king pertains to me. Amen. Everything he has, I have. Everything I have, which is small to give back, but I give it to him. Amen. Our lives as a sacrifice. So say in, in, chapter, in chapter 7, verse 1, these promises, dearly beloved. Then he says, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Now, there's two cleansings that take place when you become born again. You know, when you first get born again, when you first come to God and say, hey, I'm a sinner and I repent of my sins and I'm sorry for my sins and you turn away. He comes in and he purifies you to a certain degree. Amen. He washes your sins away. He creates you into a new creature. Amen. A new creation. He makes all things new, right? So that's what happens when you get saved. And then, you know, you go through and it says, let us cleanse ourselves. And how do we cleanse ourselves as a church, as a people, as the body of Christ? Number one is prayer. Amen. We cleanse ourselves through prayer. We come to God and we ask him for forgiveness. You know, even the things that we're not aware of, which most of the time we're aware of our sin and our, and our iniquity. You know, it's, it's very few times where the Holy Spirit will say, hey, you know, this wasn't right. Most of the time, we're led into all truth. Amen? Right. But when uh, things like that do happen, we have to cleanse ourselves. You know, even after we get saved, He comes in and purifies us and makes us new. We still have to get all the filthiness of the flesh. And it says, of the Spirit. Okay? So we know... We know what the flesh is, right? We know, we know how the flesh is. It's dirty and it's sinful. Amen? But he says the spirit. He says flesh and spirit. And that's the things that pertain to your heart. Amen? See, we have a, we're made up of three. Amen? We have a, a body and a spirit and a soul. Amen? I, uh, my spirit is alive in this body and my soul is what makes up my personality. Amen. It makes up everything that I like, everything that I love. That's that's what my soul is. Amen. So you have a spirit, too. 
And and it says, I just want to read it. Let me find the scripture. It, it comes from the heart. Go to Mark. Mark 7. And I'm going to read this to you real quick. Uh, Mark 7 and 19. All right, and this is what it says. Because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the draw, purging all meats. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For what from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covenants, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Amen. So those are sins that are lodged in your heart. Amen. These are things that come from your heart. So when Paul says over here in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 to cleanse your flesh and your spirit, that means you got to get it all. Amen. You have to go in and cleanse everything. And you can only cleanse it by the blood of the Lamb, by prayer, and by reading the Word of God. Because the more words you have, the more it's going to purify you. I was listening to a, a fellow preach today, and I just run, a, run across him here recently on YouTube. And he's a young man. He's 30 years old. And he was at this church in Arizona, and he was preaching. And I mean, he was preaching just as fast as he could speak. He didn't have any notes. He didn't have anything before him. He just had a microphone, and he was giving it everything he had. And I mean, he wasn't just talking real slow. He preached for an, over an hour, and I mean the whole time he preached, it was just pouring out of him. Now that's a man that has been in prayer. That's a man that has been studying the Word of God. See, we're, we, get in, we get in a place where we, we're complacent, and we don't study, and we don't, we don't cleanse ourselves, perfecting holiness. Amen? We don't come in and, and study and pray, and then we get in front of people that need our help, and, and we're lax. Amen? We're lax. And if we have been cleansing ourselves like we should, come on, Amen. we will have something to tell them, tell them about. Amen? Yes. When, we, when we purge our flesh and our spirit. It says, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And you know, we don't, we don't preach holiness anymore. People don't preach holiness. Amen. I'm not talking about all the legalistic things that come with holiness. I'm talking about a way of life. Amen. According to the word of God. This is a, a Pentecostal movement. Amen. And, and in our land, that's what we need. We need to see a Pentecostal movement of holiness through holy people. Amen that has cleansed themselves, number one, by the blood and by the Word of God and aren't afraid to stand up and pray. You know, we, we're a country, we don't pray anymore. We don't have prayer in our homes, number one. We, don't, we take very little prayer in church, you know, and most of the time when, when you call on somebody to pray, they're the only ones praying. You know, that's why I like here when we pray, we all pray out loud. That's a good thing. Amen. We don't have prayer in school. We don't have prayer in the courthouse. We don't have prayer up on our upper levels. Amen. Why? It's because we have not cleansed ourselves and we're not living a holy life fear in the fear of God. Amen. Amen. People don't fear God anymore. They don't fear His Word anymore. You know, that was the good thing about the law. You know, the law, they read it and they feared what it said because God moved on them and there was consequences then for sin. Amen. You did certain things back in the old days, they'd stone you to death. Amen. And, and, and you would be sentenced to die. Now we just sin and we sin and we sin and nobody cares because everybody's doing it. Amen. And the church ain't supposed to be like that. We're supposed to be cleansed of all iniquity, all filthiness, all unrighteousness. And live a holy life. Amen? Alright, let's move on. It says, Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have co corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. So Paul is telling them, Look, y'all need to listen to what we're telling you because we're not going to do anything but good to you. 
Amen. The preacher doesn't stand up here to condemn you and to make you feel bad. The Holy, that's the Holy Ghost's job. You know, he'll come in and he'll convict you and he'll bring condemnation. Amen. And that's, that's to the sinner. The Word of God didn't say that there was no condemnation to the sinner. He said there was no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So when you feel condemned and you feel guilty and you feel that, that's because the Holy Spirit's coming in. He's pressing you to cleanse yourself and live holy in the fear of the Lord. Amen. So that's what Paul is saying. He said, I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. So he's saying that right there is, you know, I'm not going to condemn you. In other words, I love you and, and I'll live with you and I'll die with you and I want to go through the gate with you. Amen. All right, look at verse 4. It gets, it gets real good, and he starts talking about some good things here. He says, Great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. Now, let's break this little verse down right here. He says, Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Amen. Paul was not scared to call sin, sin, amen, and call you out on that sin. Amen. amen. Now, we have preachers today that will not call anybody on their sin, very rarely ever preach on sin, and then we wonder why we've got a church full of filthy Christians walking around that's uncleansed and not living holy lives. Come on. And don't fear God. It's because we don't have the boldness to stand up and say, hey, Amen. this is a sin. Thank you, God is not happy with Hallelujah. sin. God hates sin. Yes. And we can't be caught up in this. And you can't do that anymore. You need to repent. Amen. But we have very few people that will stand up and call on it. Now, I'm not talking about you know, stand up and pointing out in the congregation and calling people out on their sin because there's a way to go about it and there's a way not to go about it, right? You can't just walk up on somebody and say, hey, that's a sin, you're going to burn in hell. Even though that might be true. It might be true, amen? But that will not win them to the kingdom of God. That will not win them. That won't win church people and it will not win a, a person that's lost. Amen. You have to come in and do it with love. And that's how Paul did it. But you can still do it in a bold way. You know, my granddaddy was a bold man. He was bold. Amen. He would say things to you and he meant what he said, but he'd still love you. Amen. He, he'd, he'd love you. Even if you got in an altercation with him, right after that happened, he'd be telling you that he loved you. Amen. <laughs> And that's how that's how a, a man and a son or, or, you know, our children, sometimes we have to correct them and tell them, hey, this was wrong. Sometimes they might have to reap some consequences. Amen. But still, you love them. Amen. And that's what Paul is saying here. He said, great is my boldness of speech towards you. You know, so us as ministers. We can't be scared to stand up and preach on sin and to call it sin. And, and to the ones around us, you know, call them on it. We got to call them on it. Because if there's ever a time that we need to get busy, it's now. Because the earth is giving birth pains. Amen. All these things that are happening, you know, the gas prices, wars, all of these things that are happening pestilence, amen, sickness, all these things that are coming in, oh, yeah. it was all talked about in the Word of God. Yes. And now it's got to be the time that we stand up as a church, amen. as a body of Christ, in boldness of speech, and tell people the truth and the gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord. He said, great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation." So he said, look, I'm not scared to preach on you, but I'm glorying over you. Amen. In other words, I'm telling people about you, about how good you've done and, and, and the things that are is going on, the things that are happening in the church, I'm excited about it. Yes. 
Tonight, as we come to Clearview Gospel Mission, we ought to be excited about what God's Amen. doing. Amen? Yes. Excited about where He's taking us. Excited about what He has for us in our lifetime. But a lot of times, we're, we don't get real excited. Amen? Because we're burdened down with things that are going on around us. And we're not living in the Word and walking in the truth like we should be so that joy is not there a lot. And that's what Paul is saying. He said, Great is my glory of you. I'm filled with comfort. I'm exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. Amen. Let's move on. For when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. He said, Look, when I showed up, it was trouble on every side. It was, it was something going on. Every time I turned around, there was something that was happening. And I, it was fighting around us. Number one, with the, with the pagans, with the, with the people that were sinners that won't come into God. And we was fighting with them about the church thing. We was fighting with church people. Come on. I was fighting with the Jews. Paul, Paul had it on all sides. He was, he was fighting all these, fighting the Corinthians. He's fighting the church that he had planted there. And then he's fighting the Jews against the church. And he had it on all sides. And that's how we are tonight. We're fighting it on all sides. Amen. Emotionally, physically, come on, spiritually. We are fighting a battle. It's tooth and nail tonight. Yes. And we're sitting complacent. We're filthy and undone and haven't been cleansed by the word of God like we should be. Come on. Can I get an amen in the house of God? Amen. amen. We don't fear God. And we're fighting and we've we got fear that comes in. Paul was fearful. He, it said, he says it. He said within were fears. What's going to happen? He was worried about what was going to happen in the church with the people, with the ones around us. You know what? God said, fear not. He said, for I am with thee. Come on. You know, I listened to my granddaddy preach a sermon. And I, I listened to it three times back to back just to hear my granddaddy's voice. And that's what he preached. He said, fear there not. Be not dismayed. He said, the Lord, the word of God says that the Lord would uphold you with the right hand of his righteousness. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. So no matter what's going on around us, no matter how it looks, even though we're fighting, amen, because we're going to go through some battles, oh, yeah. we don't need to be fearful. We don't have to be fearful because God said that He was going to uphold us with the right hand, the strong hand of His righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Nevertheless, God that comforteth those that, that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus and not by his coming only but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you so Paul was down here he said when he showed up to Macedonia he was troubled he was having problems with the people he was having problems with the church he was worried about how things were going to play out with his first letter that he sent to the church he was worried. He was concerned about the souls. Amen. And then here comes Titus. And he gives him a good report. Amen. He said, not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you. When he told us your earnest desire. Your mourning, your fervent mind toward me so that I rejoice the more. So. What happened was Paul had sent this first letter, the first Corinthians, come on. He sent this letter and he was real bold in the things that were going on. Amen. We read first Corinthians. We just finished the study on it. He, he was kind of harsh on them in certain certain areas. And he was wondering in himself that he had been too hard on. them, And he was wondering and he was anticipating how they was going to take it. And what they was going to do with it once they got the letter. Amen. Because they didn't have email. Amen. They didn't, have, they didn't pick up the phone and call the church and see how things was going. So here comes Titus. And he comes up and starts telling Paul about all the great things that's happening at the church of Corinth. 
He said, when He told us your earnest desire. Now, what is our earnest desire tonight? Is it to be holy in the sight of God and to fear Him? Do we fear His Word? What is our earnest desire? We've got desires. Amen. What does your heart desire tonight? Amen. It ought to be. But a lot of times we desire in a lot of other things. Amen. We watching stuff on TV and we got to go this place and we got to go that place and we got to spend our time at the gym and we've got priorities. Amen. Come on. Let's get real. And our desire doesn't lie in the Word of God, in the fear of God, and in holiness. Amen? It doesn't. But it did for these folks. After he wrote them that letter, they started doing what they were supposed to be doing. He said, You're mourning your fervent mind toward me so that I rejoice the more. We need to remember to rejoice in all the things that are going on in the world. We can rejoice, number one, that Jesus Christ has saved our souls and we've got salvation. Amen? Amen. We got the salvation tonight. Yeah. I'm free. I'm totally free. I'm not bound by sin. I'm not bound by anything of the world. I am free tonight because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And then my earnest desire can be for Him. Amen? I can have a fervent mind and I can mourn the ones around me that's not living right. And that's what he's talking about here. He's seen how they was, and he's seen how they changed, and he started getting happy. Amen. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Now, you say, well, how's that got to do with anything around here? Well, we've just seen several people in here that's getting saved. Amen. Amen? That has completely turned their lives yes. around. You look at Junior. Hallelujah. I mean, different ones. Wow. Where is our rejoice? Where is our praise? That ought to make us happy. Amen. We ought to be happy when we see things happening in the church that are godly and, and something's, something's going on. We need, to, we need to anticipate good things. We always anticipating what's going to happen and in, in the negative. Amen. I want you to know that God's going to take care of us. He's still in control. My granddaddy said he's a miracle working God. Amen. He was a miracle working God then. He's a miracle working yes. God now. Amen. Amen. He, everything that he did for the Corinthians, he come in and he cleansed them. Jesus Christ cleansed them. Then they started cleansing themselves. They started doing the things of God. They started listening to the letter that Paul sent them. The man of God sent them. And they started walking after the Holy Spirit. Come on. And then they started having things change in their lives. Ooh. And then they started getting happy and they started blessing the ones around them. And not only was they blessing the ones around them, but word was getting out into other areas of the, of the world what was going on at the church of Corinth. Yes. Amen. Now, what if the church down the street was hearing about the things that was going on here? Amen. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. What if down at Walmart, they was talking about how we was going on up there at Clearview. Amen. Amen. Come on. Did y'all come ready to have church tonight? Yeah. Amen. The Lord is famous. Uh, my, my grandpa said something in that sermon the other day. It's really stuck with me. He said the word of God is still in style right here in America today. Amen. Right here in America today, the word of God is still in style. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good, y'all. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Yeah, when you, st is. you know, we're not the minority. People look at us and, and say, oh, well, you're Pentecostal. You're crazy. Well, biblically, I'm perfectly normal. Biblically, they're the ones that are kind of weird. Amen? Yeah. Come on. Ain't that the truth? Yeah. The ones who ain't walking around speaking in tongues. The ones who ain't casting out devils. Come on. The ones who ain't laying their hands on the sick yes. so they'll recover. That's the right. ones who ain't rejoicing. The ones who won't shout. Come on. Amen. Come on, church. Right. Amen. They're the ones that got a little something wrong with them. That's right. We got the victory. Yeah. We got the power. Yeah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. And that ought to be something to get happy about. Amen. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. 
So he's saying, look, I wrote the letter, and when I wrote the letter, I was sorry that I did it because I was so hard on you. But I'm not now. Amen? Hey. Because it took root. That's right. That's right. Have you ever said something to somebody and it was a little harsh, but it was by the word of God and it took root? Amen? I have. I've, done, I've been bold, a little too bold sometimes. Amen? And I wondered, you know, sh should I have said that? And then later on, you see that it took root in those people. And that's what happened here with the Corinthians. That's what they needed. Man. You know, sometimes when I was a kid, I needed a little paddling. <laughs> Amen. I needed to be taken outside on the back porch and do the little dance. <laughs> Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. And we need that sometimes too. Amen. Yeah. Can I get an amen? amen? Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. Sorrowed to repentance. There's a lot of people that come to church and they're sorry for their sins, but they don't repent. Amen? They're sorry for the way that they live. They're sorry about a lot of things, but they don't change. Amen? Amen. That's not salvation. That's not regeneration. I got a saying for you tonight. That's not regeneration. That's refrigeration. <laughs> Amen. Y'all catch Amen. that sometime. You stay cold. You put something in the refrigerator, it stays cold. Amen. Yeah, it, it cuts the light off when you shut the door. Yeah, it <laughs> and it stays chilled. Amen. And that's how people do God. We come to church instead of being regenerated. Amen. We get a little warm when we get in here because we're going on a head trip. And in the moment, we want to serve God. And in the moment, it sounds good. And in the moment, we get a fire lit up under us. And we come to the front and we don't really mean business with God. We just want God to do it all because we don't want to cleanse ourselves. We don't really want to pray. We don't really want to study our word. We just want God to come in and wash all our sins away and everything be good. And then we get back in the refrigerator. Amen. And get cooled down again. You see what I'm saying tonight, oh, church? Yes. Yes. Amen. But that's not what happened with the Corinthians. He preached the word of God to them and they were sorry. Amen. They were sorry for their sins. They come under condemnation. Amen. They had something in their heart that was stirring. And they wasn't happy living that way anymore. They wanted to come alive. They wanted to do what God told them to do. And they sorrowed unto repentance. True repentance. Amen? Not lip service. Not, I'm going to come and say these few words and I'm going to go out and, and think everything's okay. They changed their whole life. I'm talking about a lifestyle change. Amen? And that's what happened here. For behold, for godly sorrow, verse 10, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to, be, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. So godly sorrow, you know, condemnation, amen, that works repentance in you. And you shouldn't be sorry for it. You shouldn't be sorry when you feel guilty of the things, because that's what's going to bring you to repentance. That's what's going to bring you to the Father. Sometimes, it might come hard. And it's sometimes a lesson that we have to take that doesn't feel too good. It goes against the grain. But it's good for us. Amen? It's good for us. And it's necessary so that we will come back to the Lord. For behold, this selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sword, what carefulness it wrought in you. Now look, look what happens. All right, This is the difference between worldly sorrow Amen. Just a momentarily sorrow and a godly sorrow. Amen. This is this is what happened. They were sorry. They repented. And then he says that you saw it after a goodly sword. What carefulness it wrought in you. Christians aren't careful anymore. 
We're not careful. We'll do anything. We'll say anything. We'll read anything. We'll watch anything. We don't guard our sacrifice. We don't guard our heart. We don't guard our mind. We don't guard our prayer life. We don't guard our study time. We don't guard the ones around us. We don't lift them up. We talk about them and don't lift them up in prayer. Come on, church. We're not careful in anything anymore. It's time that we be careful. You know, when they were sorry and they repented, they was careful Christians. They wanted to walk just right. They wanted to talk just right by the Word of God. Come on. Right. They cleansed their selves in a holiness. They wanted to walk holy. Amen. In everything that they did, they wanted to live a holy life. What carefulness. We're careless Christians tonight. The church is careless and don't care. They, they just don't care. Amen. And we wonder why people don't, don't come to salvation anymore. Because we live in just like everybody else is living Amen. and we call ourselves saved and that ain't how it is. Amen. You're not saved. If you said that you're saved and you live like the devil Monday through Saturday, you're not saved. And even if you come to church on Sunday and you come up here and shout it down, that don't mean nothing. Right. Amen. One man said it don't matter how loud you holler or how high you jump, it's how straight you walk when your feet hit the floor. Amen. And that's holiness. Amen. What clearing of yourselves? We've got some stuff that we need to clear out tonight. You've got thoughts and a thought process that needs to go through the Word of God. The Word of God needs to flow through you. Amen? You've got things in your heart that need to go through a clearing, through a cleansing. Amen? Through a sanctification. We need to be careful. We need to be cleansed. He says, what indignation? That's like a holy anger towards sin. Where is, our, where is our zeal towards sin? We let sin go rampant all around us. We never say a thing. It doesn't bother us. It doesn't make us angry. When you ride by a mosque, you ought to get angry that they're preaching a false doctrine and people's going to go to hell because they're doing these things. When you, when you ride by and see people living lives of sin and the sin that's coming in and, and corrupting our families, our children, come on, sin is, is coming in and it's overtaking our country. It ought to make you mad. It ought to make you angry over what the devil and his army is doing to the church and to the body of Christ and we let it go on. It's time we stand up in boldness, in righteousness, in holiness and, and, and stand against it. It says, what fear? Fear of the Lord. What vehement desire? And that vehement means a passion. It's a passionate desire. Where's our desire at? Where's our desire to live holy? Where's our desire to pray? Where's our desire to read the Word of God? Where's our desire to win souls? He that wins souls is wise. That's why our churches ain't full. Because we ain't out knocking on doors. We ain't testifying. We ain't got no zeal about us. We ain't cleansed our own selves. Come on. And we're not walking holy. And we have no desire. What zeal? What revenge? In all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. In all things you have approved yourselves. Approve yourself. Who? To who? To God. When you approve yourself to God, you'll be approving to the ones around you. Amen. Amen? Now, it might bring a, a standard to the ones around you, and they might not like that standard, but so be it, as long as you're walking in the Word of God. Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did it not for His cause that had done the wrong, nor for His cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. And he's talking about the man that committed fornication. In 1 Corinthians, remember he told him to excommunicate the man from the, from the flock, amen, from the church. And he said, I didn't do it for him and I didn't do it for the one that hurt, got hurt by it. He did it that in the sight of God, you'll know that I care for you, amen. And that's what we have to do when we win souls. They have to know that we care for them. Amen. And we love them and we're not doing it for another notch in our belt right. or another position or another title that we're doing it 
because that's what God said do. We Amen. care about their soul and we want the Lord to be pleased with me and with you. Amen. 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 Therefore, we were comforted in your comfort. Yea, and exceedingly the more joyed we for the joy of Titus because his spirit was refreshed by you all. Now, I want you to underline that. His spirit was refreshed by you all. Are you refreshing to be around? Come on. Are you one of those Christians that, that somebody else just can't wait to get around because you're so full of the power of God, so full of the anointing, been prayed up and been, been in your word so much that it's just pouring out of you. And, and it's when I get around you, all the burdens roll away. All my problems turn into nothing because the power of God is so strong. Are we those kind of people? Amen? Thank you. Amen? Amen? It says His Spirit was refreshed by you all. Titus went down there to Corinth and he seen what was going on at the church and he seen the power of God that was moving and it stirred him up. And he went back to Paul and started telling him about all the things that was happening down there and then Paul done got excited. Amen? It was a chain event. It's like dominoes. It's just falling right over. Amen? I want to be that man that when you get around me, you feel the love and the compassion of God. Amen. You can feel a stirring around me. Amen. In my little bubble, I want to be a man that is refreshing to be around. Not a Christian is all, oh, yeah, you know. Mm, I don't know how it's going to be today. How was your day? That was terrible. It was rain all day, you know. Come on, church. We ought to be happy. Amen. We ought to be refreshing. For if I have boasted anything to him of you, I am not ashamed. But as we spake all things to you in truth, even so our boasting, which I made before Titus, is found a truth. So he's saying, look, I'm bragging about you. Amen. I want you to be someone I can brag on. Amen. That's living a holy life. Amen. You be the one that people can brag about. You be the one that you can... Let your church be the church that you brag on. Amen. Amen? When's the last time you just bragged on Clearview Gospel Mission? When's the time you walked up and told somebody, hey, I got a pastor, and she preaches the Word of God, and it's good, and we have a good time down there. You ought to show up one Sunday. You be blessed. When's the last time we bragged on? When's the last time you bragged on your father-in-law for how handsome he was? <laughs> Amen. I want y'all to know that I got a handsome father-in-law. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. We got to start bragging on some people. Amen. Not, not in pride, but in truth. And his inward affection is more abundant towards you whilst he remembereth the obedience of you all. How with fear and trembling ye received him. Now look at 16. This is the last verse. I rejoice, therefore, that I have confidence in you in all things. And that's what I want to leave you with tonight. Can people be confident in your walk with the Lord? Can I be confident in you to pray? Can I be confident in you to study your word? Can you be the one that I call up when I have a problem and say, hey, I need help. I need prayer. I need somebody to supplicate with me. I need somebody to take me to the throne. I need to see somebody who's living holy. Can you be that one? Amen? Amen. Are you confident in yourself as living a holy life? If you're not, you need to repent. And after you repent, you need to cleanse yourself by the Word of God. And you need to pray without ceasing. Amen? Amen? And then the Lord will uphold you yes. with the right hand Hallelujah. of His righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? I love you tonight. I appreciate you. And uh, good. it's a good yes. chapter. Amen? That was a very good chapter. I'm going to dismiss us in prayer. Lord, I thank you for the time that you've given us tonight to come and hear your word and to study your word. I ask, Lord God, that we would take your word and we would heed to it, that we would listen to it and that we would take it to heart. Lord, let us be a joy to be around. Let us cleanse ourselves, Lord, of all filthiness in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits, in our souls, in our flesh, in every area of our lives. Let us cleanse ourselves, Lord, by your word, by your blood and by prayer and supplication. Lord, I ask that you would bless this church, that you would bless these people, that everybody listens to this message, Lord, that you would touch them. 
Lord, I ask that you would help us and have mercy on us. And I thank you, Lord, for my salvation. I thank you for everything you've done for us. Uphold us, Lord, with your right hand of righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen.